Greetings, dear ones. I'm Crying of Magnetic Service. And so the energy builds. It is not seeable. For the three dimension reality that you live in that you live with doesn't let you see who you are. It's one of the reasons that spirit looks upon you and wants to wash your feet. If I use the word sacrifice, it's not correct. It sounds like suffering and you're not here for that. If I use the word courage, it's more appropriate. Then an entity that is God and part of the creative source would take themselves and rip away the very knowledge of who they are. Some would say dumbing themselves down so they had no idea that they were even part of God. To walk the planet in corporeal form on purpose, with permission. And that's who you are. And then we come yet again asking you to remember, to remember, to remember. Old souls are awakening. And what is it you wake up to? You wake up to perhaps a feeling, an intuition, that there is purpose here. And then the three dimension part of your logic will take you to the next part of that and you'll say, and now what is it I am to do? And before you there is a list. One that is linear. Shall I write a book? Shall I channel? Shall I travel? Shall I heal? And so many times we've said, dear human being, none of those things are what spirit wants for you. Not really. Oh, you might do them. But spirit wants you to remember. In the remembrance comes light. In the light comes a change in the planet because you are there. Again and again. We return to that which is the metaphor of light and dark and how you change a darkened room with just one match. That's what you're here for. And if you spend your life thinking you are less than or wondering why you were born or feeling somehow it should be better. You create your own demise. For you'll go back to that place where you came, which you call death, and wake up on the other side of the veil with me, and you'll hardly wait to get back, saying, maybe I'll give it another shot. Maybe I'll wake up this time. Maybe I can do something for the planet. Well, we're saying, why don't you listen now? Well, there are things you can do now. And we've said it before, and we've said it before, and we've said it before. You leave this place, and you walk into dark areas, and you know where they are, whether they're at home, whether they're at family, whether they're at work, whether they're with friends, and all you have to do is hold the light. You become compassionate. Have you ever tried to argue with a person who's compassionate? <laughs> Have you ever been angry and gone into a confrontation and you expected anger back and what you got was surrender? Where a human says to you, I'm not angry. And you are. <laughs> And the human, being, human says to you instead, I surrender to you. I'm vulnerable in front of you. 
because I feel the love of God in me. Let us not be angry again. And what do you do? It just dissolves you, does it not? And all that anger and energy, and it just goes away. And you just met a light worker who was able to change you because they were different. Do you see how this works? Now that's work. And that's what you came for. To change your countenance. To be more compassionate. To hold light. There are so many questions asked. The hows, the whys, the reasons. And they've been asked for all of these years and we attempt to answer them the best way we can. And here is another channeling, yet another channeling, where we endeavor to explain the unexplainable. Unexplainable to those who stay in the box of 3D. Many times the answers are not what you want to hear. We're crying, how do I do this? And we say, you just do. <laughs> That's not good enough. It's not an answer that you can work with. And yet that is the answer. <laughs> and so let us start to pull these things apart. To give you metaphors, ideas, explanations on some of the hardest issues we have ever brought. And we continue to do this. There's someone here who needs this today. Oh, dear ones, before we start this process of teaching, again, where do you stand here? Is this real to you or is it the man in the chair pretending? Again, I plead with you. What if it's real? What if there are messages coming from the other side right now? What if an entourage pours into this room that you can feel and touch? What if it includes those, you, those you've loved and lost? What if, what if it does? What if there's a, a dispensation right now of grace that would allow you to tune in in a way you never tuned in before? What if this was all correct and true? What if there's healing right now being sent to you? And if there were, is it worth it to harden your heart and miss it? Is that what you want? What does it gain you to harden up right now and miss that what you came for? There's only a little time left in this meeting, only a short amount of time. Let the love of God and the joy of this time, the beauty presented in this room, sail into you and touch you profoundly. Let it shake hands with the Creator inside you. And you would be touched and you would know that all is well. <laughs> that you're not here to suffer. And that you were born for purpose. May you soften your approach to conspiracies. And understand that it is energy wasted. There's only one conspiracy in the room. And that is the conspiracy of love. God loves you enough to bias the room. The conspiracy is of the angels who stand around your chair. The conspiracy is that which would touch your heart if you allow it. And past that, nothing else matters. And so I've been asked to become academic. <laughs> How do we start the process of enlightenment? How do we start the process of speaking to cellular structure? How do you begin something that has no way to begin in a linear fashion? 
you are in four dimensions and you stay there and nothing you're going to do at this particular moment in time is going to push you into a multi-dimensional state where you'll have an aha and see it all it's taken my partner 22 years to knock on the door and start to understand what is truly there but that was then and this is now and what is taking place is a quickening and some of you are feeling it it is a quickening that you have produced with a consciousness that you have let's talk about intent we have discussed intent many times it is the beginning and what are you intending to do and what is the process we have mentioned it before there is a body intelligence called innate this represents a quantum field around you which is the culmination and the summation that is to say the sum of the parts of the energy of the DNA now because it's in a quantum state it has nothing to do with how much DNA you have or where it is it just is it is an entangled state one with another creating a field that is quantum which some have called the Merkaba it is not in 4d now pieces and parts of it are like gravity is multi-dimensional and yet you can see it work but you cannot see it like magnetism is multi-dimensional and you can see the results of it but you cannot see it it is invisible you can see the results of a quantum field around a human being you can even feel it it's your innate it is the intelligence of cellular structure it knows DNA it knows you you might often say and it has been said that there are two intelligences in the body the corporeal intelligence the innate is quantum and separate from the 4d intelligence which is your ordinary life and the exterior as you walk around and so many of you strive for the bridge and the bridge would be this how can you get in touch with innate what is the process is there support is there guidance where do you begin this channel will not answer those but it will give you the concepts for you to work with that might help you to achieve your goal intent what do you think about when you think of intent you intend to do something might mean a week from Thursday or in four years that's not the intent we talk about sometimes you intend to do something and then you do it and then you unintend it well, that didn't work I'll intend to do something else and you'll unintend that serial intention <laughs> and that's not what we're talking about it's a difficult concept but I'm gonna give it to you this is a kind of pure intent that when you begin it other forces take over and accomplish what you could not do yourself intent is a key it starts a process that you are not in charge of and that is hard for the human being to grasp why is it hard when you swallow food are you in charge of your digestion no you're in charge of putting the food in the digestion is in charge of itself that's innate why is this hard for you is it because you believe that you have to control it all the way along the way so if you're going to make a spiritual intention you want to know what the next step is there and then the next step and the next step so you're in full control or is it good enough 
to start the process and let the love of God do the rest. Hmm. That requires some surrender. Oh, mature one. Intent. Think of it this way. You're standing on the edge of the pool. You have four-dimensional intent to jump in the water. That intent then manifests itself in action. You jump as hard and as high as you can. At that moment, it's pure intent. There is no turning back. And the energies around you take you to the pool, and that's gravity. Once you leap, you don't go back. And this is the metaphor of pure intent. 22 years ago, I gave my partner a concept, and we wrote it in book one. Released years after the concept was given to my partner, where he struggled with it and would not release it because of the word implant. Three years, he would not release it. I gave it to him in 89. Published the book in 93. It took him three years after I gave it to him. Thinking about it. Dismissing it. Saying it was not correct. Wanting us to channel it again. It came back the same word every time. Implant. I remember him pleading with us in meditation saying that is something that light workers are taking out of people, not putting in people. You can't use that word crying, he said. And I said, that is the word. It is defined as the implantation of pure intent to change your cellular structure. And you can't go back. And the word was given so that people would think twice before they did it because you don't try it any more than you try to jump in the pool. Once you've jumped, you're in the pool. <laughs> I give you this information so you will understand the profundity of the beginning of the process. And there are those who say, all right, how do I begin? I just told you. <laughs> You want it clearer than this, all right? Becoming more academic, more linear. You may sit and say to innate, which is your body, which is on your side and always listening, dear cellular structure, dear creator inside, I intend purely to change. And I will accept that which is a force which will take my intention into a manifestation state. And wherever that takes me, I will celebrate it, for I have given pure intent for it. And wherever that takes me, I know it'll be correct and proper. And I'll try to understand. And it may take me to places which are dark for a moment, and I'll try to understand. And if this intent changes my vibratory level, I know there'll be a space of uncomfortability. And I'll try to understand. And I will walk around expecting solutions and knowing that I am changing and I will celebrate it every moment of the day. That is intent. And there's something that happens you should know about, and there's no name for it. We're not going to give it a law of spiritual physics name. We're not. Because then it becomes a buzzword, and then it'll go into a list. <laughs> and we're not going to do it. We're just going to tell you the truth, that when you give pure intent, there's something that happens. This spiritual physics of your higher self, of the body's innate, of your DNA itself, waiting to hear these words with your permission implantation of permission to change. A process begins that you are not in charge of. 
energies that have not yet been explained to you keep you up at night <laughs> and you start to feel it dear ones there is no delete key in human consciousness you cannot unknow something because you want to unknow it once the process starts and there's revelation you cannot unknow it once the process begins to change you and that around you you cannot go back oh you can deny it ever happened and then you're in unbalance in denial you can pretend it didn't happen you're in imbalance in denial do you see the importance of pure intent don't do it unless you mean it but old souls they mean it because they know that's why they came that's number one I'm gonna give you three things that's number one I have done my best to give you the linearity and the academics and the intellectualization of intent it's up to you to go to the next level it's not linear it's a concept number two I would like to discuss with you more about this intelligent physics what is the energy of the planet now compared to 20 years ago there's something happening there is a support system that is beginning a support system you've never had it's just beginning and some of you are starting to feel it and we mentioned it and those things which are conceived in compassion are going to work those things which are conceived in unity are going to work and they didn't necessarily work 20 years ago something is happening there's a cooperative Gaia approach here something is happening it is actually allowing light workers to hold their light now I speak to those light workers who have been part of this what you would call old soul revolution for up to 40 years and you fought the good fight haven't you and you've had the battle and you've known what it's like to walk into energy that affected you you've had to be careful where you went because there was darkness that was too strong you had to be careful who you healed you had to be careful about the unbalanced person that was with you because it was a fight and some of you were drained and had to have recovery and that was the energy then and I know it and it's not that way now some years ago we started to tell you that your light is stronger than any darkness some years ago we started to give you the principle of the light worker the lighthouse all of this to tell you that there's an intelligent physics which will take whatever you do now and amplify it amplify it but more than that there is now beginning to be a system a system of support it's not just about energy that's going to work for you there's a system of support all right my partner is saying linearize it intellectualize it make it academic these are concepts the tree is life it does not have the kind of a consciousness of will that you do but it is life it has life force it has reproduction it lives or it dies the tree is in the forest not knowing whether it will be a tree for long it's brittle and fragile at first but the forest supports it for the tree finds out quickly that there's dark and light there's sunshine there's soft earth where the roots can go there are insects that will actually feed it and it somehow feeds them there's an ecology a system that supports the tree the tree does not stand alone and soon there is a forest a 
force that has grown up seemingly against all odds because there is a system. And how did that system get there? Carefully. <laughs> Through a long time of shift and change in order to fine tune it so it was perfect. Take the same tree and put it in the desert, it dies. Same tree, same life force. It won't survive for the system is missing. The light worker is now in a position where the system is beginning to work. And here's what it means, and my partner says, become more linear and more academic. You give intent. The process begins. Like the tree, you're planting yourself in a system of manifestation. The system begins to support you more than any time in history of humanity. And the support comes in synchronicity. You can count on it. Synchronicity is that against all odds you meet those other individuals or run into situations which know you and help you and you have it in plenty of time. Taking away fear. Taking away fear. Do you know what happens when you fear? You break synchronicity completely. Did you know that? Here comes pure intent, here comes the system, and you say is the tree, but what if it doesn't work? What if the soil isn't soft? What if the sun doesn't shine? What if, what if? And humans do this, and it interrupts the synchronicity. The system can't work when you're in denial of your power. Can't work. And so what am I teaching here? You got to trust the system. You give intent. And here comes this intelligent physics. Your body starts to react. Things start to happen with you. The quantumness of you actually cooperates in the quantumness of Gaia with other human beings. And you create the fields you can't see. And you run into people you never thought you'd meet. And together you solve each other's problems. That's just the beginning. It's a system. Beautiful it is. That's number two. You are supported in ways you were never supported before. It's time to try things again which you've discounted could ever happen. What is it you tried and didn't, didn't work? And now you realize the timing was horrible and it should have been now. Why don't you try it again? The system is starting to be in place. That's good news. Do you realize what I'm saying? All that you have asked for regarding the shift of this planet Earth and the vibratory changes that you have wanted are starting to fall into place. Look around the Earth. Look what's happening. Civilizations, cultures, casting away the old, not even knowing where they're going, but sure it'll be better than where they came from. That's new. There's a system beginning on the planet. That's new. Number three. I've just shown my partner what it is. And he's saying to me, don't go there unless you're linear. I can't. Because the process is not linear. It's called guidance. <laughs> Here's the question asked by every human being who hears the message. And it says, all right, I've given intent. I'm part of the system. And here I sit. How do I know what to do? He says, be linear. All right. Guidance is quantum. Therefore, 
it is not going to appear to the human being as the human being expects it if you want guidance from spirit what in 3d do you expect signs voices writing something that you would recognize in your three-dimensional reality and act upon and you want steps for it how many steps what should I do how can I create the energy so that I can know where I'm going and what I'm doing how can I tell yes or no and that's a big one so we begin it is not going to be in 4D get used to it it will not be in 4D the artist is here <laughs> or Leah and she has said to you that she awakened one day and the painting in her mind was already on the canvas did she hear voices did she have signs were there emotions and the answer is no there is a part of the brain that you call creative and we call divine it is the creative source in you it's the only part that you can feel every day it makes up stories it sings songs it's your imagination and you all have your stories I know this <laughs> especially active in the inner child it's where the picture was for Orlia and she saw it so clearly it was already on the canvas all it took was for her to manifest the physical part of putting the paint there greatest sculptors in the world looking at blocks of granite seeing what has to be removed in order to create that which is remaining which is art where does that come from it is a quantum concept it is not linear no artist paints by the numbers <laughs> and you're not going to get guidance that way either guidance comes from the same place or Leah's painting came from it's going to appear to you all at once and it's going to be so quick that you're going to discount it and what you have to learn is to exercise the muscle that holds it there and this comes with patience and time how do you hold a fleeting concept of art trust first intuition pay attention to flashes of thought which would make you turn left or right which you would formerly discount as noise you learn to work with it so you cannot have a linear answer to how am I going to get guidance on what to do past what I am telling you now learn to pay attention to that which your creative mind gives you and you tend to discount as your imagination because that's where it is that's where the higher self talks to the human being that's where you feel loved four years ago my partner crossed a barrier almost five now where I asked him whether he would like me to be with him all the time instead of when he sits down and channels <laughs> and the first question he asked is what will I lose <laughs> what will I lose oh how linear of him and you know what that represents it represents linear three-dimensional thought if you're gonna get something good something's gotta go right if you get something there's a there's only room for so much matter right so if you're gonna take on something something else is gonna you're gonna lose in order to get how 3d of you 
I had to train him. It's a win-win because the energy of this planet is creating something that you've never seen before. You're not going to lose anything. You're going to have it added unto you in greater measure. And today he walks with me and he can access me whenever he wishes, when appropriate, and I'll be there. And what this took from him was training to open that creative part of his mind and keep it open. Constant, continuous, intuitive thought. And he found out it's a bigger tool than he thought it would be. Not only does he get crying, he could even paint if he wanted to. <laughs> don't try it, my partner. I don't want you there. I want you here in the chair. The creative ability is wide open for channeling and for more. Wide open. And now he has no trouble with direction and he has no trouble with guidance. And when those ask him, how can I do it? He'll answer them and he'll say, you just do. I cannot explain it any better than I have. And maybe there'll come a time when it can be drawn or even painted. And maybe my partner will do that. But right now it is a concept and it's real. If you want to start the process, start with intent. Don't worry about what happens after that, but make it pure. You mean it, you can't go back. Next, understand that the energy of this planet is in support of you. Expect solutions. Do you know what's going to happen when you're in that state? You become a creator. Manifestation starts to visit you. But the rules are the same. You cannot sit and wait for it to land upon you. You must step out, push on the doors, and see what works. And we say it again. Here are your instructions for pushing on the door. If you get resistance, walk the other way. Don't push it. Don't force it. That is a sign. All of these things working together will steer you into the appropriate place you want to be in. That's the earth supporting you. Watch what you think and what you say because you are in creative mode. If you say, I'm always tired, the universe will be happy to make you always tired. <laughs> if you say, I knew that would happen, it always does. The universe will cooperate and it will always happen. Do you understand what I'm saying? You can create whatever you want. Now you have to start thinking differently. The man cuts you off on the freeway. Think differently. Bless him. I'm sorry he's having a bad day. Can you do that? And if you don't, you're going to manifest very clearly what you don't want. Fear begets fear. Anger begets anger. You can generate them, manifest them, put them upon yourself. You're a grand creator, especially in creation mode. Because the earth is going to support what you want. Finally, guidance is going to come from the creative center of your mind, that part that paints pictures, sings songs, does poetry. That is the message, dear ones, this day. Now, what are you going to do with it? <laughs> You're going to say this, I know. Well, it all sounds good. I think I'll try it. A week from Thursday. I'm busy. <laughs> Why don't you do it now when the entourage is here? 
why don't you do it now so I can watch it? Is that perhaps why you came? Make it simple. I intend to start this process and I'm going to do my best. And some are saying, I've got to listen to this channeling again. <laughs> I've got to be sure. And then if, if you are one saying that you didn't get it, what I'm telling you is you start the ball rolling and it rolls by itself. Do you, have, do you understand this? It rolls by itself. That's the love of God. So you can start the ball rolling tonight on the healing you came for and not wait until you're alone someplace where you think it's safe to be weird. That's why I'm here. For I am crying in love with humanity, but I am aware of the quickening. And you've never heard me say it before. Do it now. Don't wait. For now is a good time to plant the seeds of peace on this world. And so many generations from now, many generations from now, you may actually meet your Pleiadian brothers and sisters. When they come down and they look just like you. And they say, job well done. And that is where it's going. Lightworker. And so it is.